I am live. I'm reading A Lot to Remember. This is a book by John Marshall Grant. It's about a particular area of France. In the dedication here, it says um, a dedication to, uh, she sent a dedication to Dennis and Charles with love for a lot to remember. These were both her husbands. This was published in 1962 and Joan Marshall Grant passed away in 1989. She wrote Far Memory Book. Amazing woman. Uh, we are here at the ending. Uh, this chapter was entitled On Priests and Plumbing, chapter 13. Uh, and I'm reading the ending of it now. Um, I was interrupted. Well, I was about to ask what happened to the unfortunate man when one of our companions loosed a great belly laugh and said, We were glad to be rid of him, and we let him know it, before he fled from Einach at dawn the following morning. I felt acutely sorry for the poor little cleric, who was the victim of a dogma which professes to the Christian and yet considers celibacy, celibacy a suitable discipline for a man whose duty it should be to cure souls by teaching his people how to love their neighbours and themselves. But while I was searching my limited vocabulary for words in which to put forward this point of view, the man on the other side of me launched with gusto into a story about the curé of another Lutois village. One morning, this curé assembled his congregation, took off his cassock, and announced that he could not celebrate, celebrate the Mass, as he had fallen in love with the village school teacher, and that after he had renounced his vows, he would marry her. And marry her he did, for the mayor could not refuse to perform a civil ceremony. When they came out of the Marie, um, out of the Mary as man and wife, the village street was deserted, but they had, but they walked hand in hand towards the cafe at which they had invited the villagers to drink their health. Suddenly, every window was flung open, stones and dung rained down upon them. There were a great many stones. As they lay stunned and bleeding in the roadway, an ambulance drew up beside them. The plot had been meticulously planned, and the ambulance summoned on a fake emergency call so as to arrive at the exact moment that would relieve the, the, relieve the villagers from my obligation of aiding their victim who spent their wedding night and many more nights also in Carbord Hospital. The last time Charles and I had dinner at Einach, Madame la Patronne asked me to see the bedroom so that I could decide which one I preferred when we returned to visit her. There are six bedrooms in the Hotel Pierudan and each had a newly installed basin and bidet with hot and cold running water. The bidets were very expensive, said Madame with feeling. I almost persuaded myself to the further extravagance of a bathroom, but this would have been foolish, for a bath is seldom used and makes too great a demand on the hot water. A bathroom is more popular with English visitors than any number of, number of bidets, I said suggested tentatively. In England, a bidet is a rarity. She looked startled and then exclaimed, for a moment I did not realize you were making a joke. No bidets indeed. Everyone knows the English are fussy about cleanliness. So how could anyone be silly enough to imagine that they were serious when you pretended they only washed their hands and faces? I went into each bedroom, debating aloud for her benefit whether I would prefer the colour of the curtains in one to the view from another. Opening cupboards and bouncing on beds 
which pleased her exceedingly. For, for not to look at every available room before making your choice is as incomprehensible and as discourteous to a French hotelier as it would be to say any bottle will do when offered a wine list. I made I made, me, I made my final choice and we were in the corridor. Then she asked, I am now going to ask you a most important question. Do the English prefer to sit or to stand? For a moment I thought she was, made, she was asking whether to invest in her bar stools. Then she flung open a door to, uh, to reveal the kind of WC, now fortunately less prevalent, in the lot in which, it is, in which it is necessary to perch precariously on two footrests. Like the rest of the hotel, this one was clean, but I noticed an extra hazard in three bedroom, in three brooms, which were balanced on a narrow ledge above high, right, high tide level. Do you prefer to sit or to stand? She repeated anxiously. We sit, I said firmly. But why, madame, why? My French withered as I tried to be helpful and tactful at the same time. Phrase is skeleton to my mind, because it is so difficult holding my bag in my teeth, because I get cramped in my calves, because one has to be as agile as a sparrow balancing on a telephone wire. I discarded these arguments as being too difficult except in English and heard myself saying pontifically, we sit because we also read here. In England, it is the custom. Read, she exclaimed, the English read in the WC? I felt even more idiotic. It is because we are shy. We do not like to admit even to ourselves why we go to this little room. So we read to take our mind off the subject. She looked completely mystified. The English are shy of going to the WC, but they are not shy of being seen, eating their dinner, and surely one is as natural as the other. I know it is, but many of my compatriots don't know. I must have said this very earnestly, for she stopped smiling and became thoughtful. Madame, you've done me a great service, for without your help I should have continued to offend my English clients. She beat her forehead with the palm of her hand. I blush to think how I misunderstood an English lady who came to lunch with us only last week. If I had not been so ignorant, she might have still been here and you could have apologized to her for my stupidity. You ask me what I did? I had not had time to do so, but she forgave this oversight and paused only long enough to increase the tension of her narrative. The English lady, I know she is English, for when I took down from, when I look down from the balcony, I see there is GB on that car is with her husband. I know he is her husband, for he is too brusque with her to be a lover or even a friend. He's having a drink at the bar when she whispers to me that she wishes to wash her hands. Why does she not wear glasses, I ask myself, if she is too blind to see that the wash basin is placed most conveniently on the wall behind her. I point to the wash basin, but she sh shakes her head. I think that is, I, I think that she is complaining that the roll lamp towel is not clean enough, so I fetch a fresh one from the cupboard. Again, she shakes her head. Surely she cannot be complaining about the soap. Does she expect me to provide a new piece for each client? But I give her a new piece and still she's not satisfied. Then she says to me, can I go upstairs? Naturally, I think she wishes to inspect the bedrooms before deciding whether she wishes to stay in my hotel. I show them all, except number five, which is occupied by a commercial traveller from Toulouse. None of them seem to please her. I'm beginning to feel indignant, 
that she had not even had the civility to inquire my prices when suddenly she sees the store on which WC is so clearly painted and bolts inside as though it were a burrow and she hunted rabbits. The poor woman wished to make pee pee, but she was too shy to say so. I told you the English are very shy, I said apologetically. Oh, my dear madame, how grateful I am to you. I must go immediately to tell my husband. She rushed off to find him. I seized the opportunity to retreat into the object of our discussion. I was weary of the brooms, but not weary enough for one of them toppled from its ledge and, and struck me a shrewd blow on the, head, on the back of the head while I was leaping to avoid the inundation which, as is usual in such situations, resulted from the most cautious tweak at the plug. After the protected fire farewells that followed our admirable dinner, Madame la Patronne, la Patronne leaned over the rail of the balcony and shouted, Tell all your English friends that they will be happy in my hotel. Not a moment's shyness shall they suffer. I shall tell them at once. The room for reading is at the top of the stairs. Okay, that was the end of chapter 13, and I am reading uh, next uh, chapter 14, Midsummer Magic. The date is the 29th of October.